welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Selena here. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a 90 day fiance recap. I'm so excited. They are back on again. So this is the 90 day fiance the other way. Beanham and Ariella, as you guys know, or if you're new to my channel, welcome. I've been doing recap videos for Ariel and Binyam. If you haven't seen them, I'll link one of them up above for you guys to click and watch and enjoy. Scenes that I'm going to be collecting and talking to you guys today. This one is now about after the mother has left, they now went into the guest house, one that's a little better after they looked and researched and found that they didn't like any of the apartments. Well, Ariella loved one, Binyam didn't, Binyam loved one, she didn't, so they found one they can kind of compromise with now. So they go into the guest home and Ariella basically was telling Binyam that she was really sorry that she felt like she was kind of being mean or being pushy, that she was going to leave him. And she knew that really hurt his feelings because really and truly like she was just, just I think she's just saying it one because she's stressed and two she's pregnant so her hormones are through the roof. Um, Binyam's like it's totally fine it's okay I understand where you're coming from. She was saying that I've been looking at things here and they're very expensive and she was looking for one of the something for the baby and uh, it was like 400 bucks and he's like yeah things are very expensive here so she was saying that okay let me ask my mother she can bring some stuff in here for us while like after I think the mother is supposed to come during the time that she's going to have the baby so she can be there in the delivery room or during the whole process kind of be her motivation in a sense and so she was saying let me ask my mom I'm gonna write a list and she can bring some stuff for us and be that's a great idea like if things are very expensive here better that she brings it and then we actually have it. So now the next scene is where they go car shopping. I know a whole lot about car shopping, let me just tell you. Uh, also link that video up above. <laughs> the cars that they have there, a lot of them are imported, right? They go and they see one car, 2008, and the cost of it was $22,000. Wow. I was like, oh my goodness, it's really that expensive, eh? Like I know things are expensive back home. Yeah, yo, cars are a luxury, man. Like, especially back home, pff, they are a luxury. Not a lot of people, like in my family, I only know like one person that drives and has his own car. So that tells you right there like it's really something like not everybody has and plus something that they can't afford, right? So for $22,000 for, first of all, it's a lot of money in general. But for 2008, like, like, like to me like that's, that's shocking. So she was also shocked obviously because in the States, the same thing. Cars are much cheaper here. Like you can get a brand, like not a brand new, but newer car for the exact same price here, right? So she was shocked. Why is it so expensive? That's ridiculous, da da da, da. And what the, the sales lady was saying, one, it's because our taxes, they're really, really high. And two, it's because it's a landlocked country. So for them to be imported, it costs a lot of money. So that is, that is true, it's very understandable. That's why it costs so much. A lot of African countries are like that as well. And plus it's with taxes too, right? Taxes are crazy expensive. You know, they found another car that was, she was saying, Ariel was like, find, let's find the cheapest one, like, cause that's really too expensive. They find a 2001, 19 years old car. Came up to $17,000. $17,000 holy I was like no like that's ridiculous like it's we can't we can't afford that right now and he's like yeah but it's something that we need as a family for him to get to one job to the next job he needs it it's understandable it's it's nice to have a car because you can go so if you have multiple jobs you're not jumping from jump from bus to bus to here to there you're just getting your car and go but back home it's a luxury for that so I understand where he's coming from but for that amount of price they need to really realize what they need and what they want if that makes any sense that's just basically that part they they go car shopping crazy expensive prices and Ariel is not happy again once again when is she ever happy I'm <laughs> now they go into her regular checkups for her pregnancy right she goes into the office and he's checking her belly and basically the baby's breech at this point she's concerned the guy who's checking her is also concerned and he's saying there's not enough fluid in the belly for the baby to turn at this point and he's really concerned by that and she was asking 21 questions like uh, is it common here in ethiopia are c-sections common here in ethiopia do you guys do it a lot in ethiopia blah, 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 blah. i'm like oh my god relax honey he's telling you what he knows i could tell he's getting annoyed and he's checking the belly he's like yeah i feel like you need to really talk to Doc, this is very serious. The one thing that's concerning is the fluid and the baby's not turning, which the baby should be turning at this point. 
because she's getting close to her pregnancy, the end of her pregnancy. You know, other than that, he said the baby looks healthy and whatnot, but that's really concerning. So after she finished asking 21 questions and he kept telling her, you need to just talk to your doctor, he'll give you more information. She was concerned and she's like, well, all he kept telling me is talk to my doctor, talk to my doctor. I'm like, yeah, because he's not your doctor. He can't disclose that information. He's just showing, telling you what he's seeing and showing you that's it like <laughs> it's not his job the doctor's job is to tell you what is going on even in even in the states they do that sorry that's just how it is they take her to um i don't know if it was the doctor she goes in they show her on the computer the lady's basically saying like your fluid is really low and it's really concerning and at this point like we can't wait any longer because Ariel is like, can we wait any longer for the baby to be able to turn? And she said, no. Even where you come from in the States, they're not going to make you wait. It's very serious. We're going to have to ha have the baby now. And she's like, okay, how soon can should I have the baby then? She goes, today. Ariella flipped that out. Like, she's like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. For, I get it. I get it. You're not thinking of having a baby all of a sudden, but just her reaction was like, you could you could tell she's really not ready at all. Like this pregnancy, she's she was not even ready since day one. Day one, you can tell. But she should have thought about this before she slept with him. Just saying. The lady said, basically, you gotta have your baby today. There's two other serious cases before you. You're the third one. You need to get ready for now. You just need to relax and breathe. Okay, Ariel. And every time she said, said saying, okay, Ariel, she's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that basically what happened she basically had to have that baby that day like there was no waiting whatsoever which is very serious what Binyam was saying which I found was really interesting I don't know if he said it in this scene or the next scene where they actually get her to the room where she's gonna have the baby but he was saying something interesting that I found was I've never heard it before was basically saying in their culture that like in Ethiopian culture that the, the stronger the love and the stronger the bond is when you're pushing out the baby naturally, but when it's a C-section, it's not. You don't have a, a stronger love or bond with your baby. I'm like, that's interesting. I've never heard that before because <laughs> that's very false. <laughs> the things that I'm hearing and, you know, like the different traditions and ways that they have uh, things set up in Ethiopia is very interesting and I've never heard it before. So I always got to ask like, a family member, like, is that true? Is that real? Baptizing the baby? That was kind of interesting too. My mom's never heard that either. And I'm like, okay, good to know. Him being concerned about that, he's also concerned of the baby and, and the mother's health and, you know, it's really serious. So they go into the surgery room and Ariel is freaking the out again. No, before that, she's, she's like laying there and Binyam's like, are you okay? Is everything good? And she's like, no, everything's not good. Of course not. And <laughs> so she's like, I just want to call my mom. So she calls her mom. It sounded like she was sleeping when she called her mom. Like probably the time difference screwed her up. So she probably called her mom like 2 a.m. So she calls her mom and she's like, mom. She's like, hi, is everything okay? She's like, no, I'm having the baby today. She's like, the baby? You're having the baby today? She's like, yeah. She told her basically what happened. She's like, oh my goodness, Ariella. I wish I could be there. I could be there with you. I could be your most support. But she was basically saying, you can do this. You got this. Do not worry. Everything was going to be okay. Which was really sweet. Like, I love her mom. She's very, she's very real and she's very wholesome. And I love that about her. So she was basically saying, you can do this, Ariella. Don't worry. I will be there after when the baby's born. It's going to be okay. Don't worry. So it, got, it did help Ariel a little bit, I could tell. Um, but obviously she has nobody there but Binyam, right? As she's, you know, freaking out again, they take her into the room, you know, in the wheelchair. She pushes her, she's like, everything okay? She's like, not happy at all. She's, she's stressed, she's scared, she's annoyed, she's pissed. She's all the emotions in one. I get it though. And they take her into the emergency room and to where she's gonna have the baby. And I've, it's very different, like how it's set up. It looks like the setup kind of reminds me of the dentist. I don't know I don't know why though I don't know if it's just because like the chair that she had to lay in like it is not like a bed it's just like a chair like a dentist chair in a sense so I don't know like obviously it's what they have right I'm not judging but it just kind of reminded me of a dentist she's at this point she's at a hundred like she's freaking out she's freaking out she's like I don't think I could do this like I'm she was so scared so Venom is like, you know what, you can do this, you got this, like, you'll, everything will be okay. Her emotions are through the roof, like, 
I, you could sense fear coming out of her. And honestly, I totally get it. Like I can only imagine the amount of stress that is going through her mind right now. The lady was like the girl or whatever. She was trying to put her arm and she's trying to get her to comply and say, okay, Ariella, like say, okay, Ariella. Like, and Ariella goes, I'm not saying okay. <laughs> I died of laughter. I'm sorry, y'all, but that made me laugh so hard. She's just blocking out everybody. So I think that's where they left off at that point is where she's freaking out. She's not complying, but she's having that baby. She's having the baby. I'm really interested to see what happens next and what goes on. I want to see what the baby looks like. And the mother's going to be coming too, which is going to be awesome. We get to see her again. If you guys enjoyed my little recap, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Comment below your favorite scene from, I guess, these little clips that I talked about. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in my next video or in my next recap if you're watching for the recap videos. Until next time, bye-bye.